Hey everyone, welcome to the Bruce Williams channel. I've got an affordable question that I'd love to share my opinion on. This one comes from a viewer named Eric. And uh, he says, Bruce, I like your opinion, your advice. I love the channel. I'm a subscriber and look forward to your videos. You are one of the rare YouTubers that I feel gives honest opinions and doesn't just regurgitate the same old talking points. Eric, uh, I appreciate that, man. Thanks, that's, that's really kind of you to say. Going back to the email, I'm really struggling between two similar watches for a future purchase, the Hamilton Murph and the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date. They are both equally beautiful watches in my opinion, and in a perfect world, I would purchase both, but I, I don't really have a need for two of them. I'm not concerned about the Oris costing more. I often hear people say the Hamilton is overpriced, but I've always been of the opinion that people only say that about something they don't want to purchase. Eric, I'm totally with you there. In fact, I'm a hypocrite because I complain about price all the time. I'm, I'm a cheap watch fan, <laughs> like a lot of you guys watching, uh, watching my video. I want as great of deal as I can get. And even if a watch is fairly priced, it's a subconscious coping mechanism, excuse me, for me to say, oh, that's overpriced. I would never spend, you know, $1,000 on that. And anybody that does has too much money and too little sense. You know, I, I hear things like that, and I'm guilty of doing that. And I think it's pretty prevalent within the watch community. We're kind of cheap guys <laughs> as, a, as a rule of thumb. Um, so anyways, let's continue. The one advantage I do see the Oris having over the Hamilton is color options. Beyond that, it's a dead heat for me. Thanks for your time. I look forward to your opinion. Keep the videos coming and nice choice on the Vacheron. I'd love to buy one, but they are way, way out of my price range. Eric. Eric, again, thanks for the kind compliment, man. Uh, hopefully I, I give you a, a non-regurgitated talking point answer here uh, that will be helpful for you. I do have a personal preference and a bias myself, but I have experience with both watches and I do enjoy both watches. Uh, I like the Hamilton more personally. I, I'm a huge fan of Christopher Nolan. I think he's my favorite modern filmmaker today. Interstellar is a great film. The Hamilton Murph is featured heavily within that, but even if it had no tie-in uh, to that movie, I think it's a strong design, it's versatile, and the big point for me is the movement. Being a Swatch Group brand, they have access to the ETA modified movements, they carry a free-sprung balance wheel, 80 hours of power reserve, and overall just a very well dialed in movement. Every one that I've tried has been almost spot on you know, one second a day, two seconds a day. And in my experience with Oris, that's not the case. I don't wanna seem like I'm too harsh on Oris because I do enjoy this independent uh, Swiss brand done in the German speaking region of Switzerland. But the Solita movements that they use, you're probably gonna get anywhere from three to 10 seconds per day fast. And I know I'm kind of quibbling over a matter of seconds, but you know, when you're spending six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a watch, you want it to be dialed in, you want it to have a great movement, you don't want it to be as inaccurate as your, you know, two and three hundred dollar Seiko and Orient watches. As snobby as that sounds, you want a little bit of an upgrade when you're spending these higher amounts of money. So uh, every Oris that I've owned has been within three or 10 seconds uh, accurate per day, fast per day. And I've looked at the instruction manuals and Oris says in there that, hey, don't freak out over accuracy. They're gonna be within roughly a 20 second window acceptable daily deviation. And for me, that's just a little bit too lax. Are you gonna get an inaccurate movement if you buy an Oris? Probably not. You're probably gonna have my experience, which was you know anywhere from three to 10 seconds fast per day, but you could get one that's 15, that's as inaccurate as a Seiko turtle, and you could say, or sorry, uh, Oris could say to you, tough luck, that's within spec. So that's something to, uh, to add to the equation to consider. Now the Hamilton, is it overpriced, right? Is, are we using our subconscious coping mechanism saying, oh, I'd never spend that much on a Hamilton. I would much rather get, you know, this watch or that watch. I would say at a thousand dollars, I wouldn't be a buyer. Again, I'm kind of a cheap watch fan, watch guy. I want a great of deal as I can get. And fortunately you can get good discounts from an authorized dealer. 
and I have a, a discount code for Mimos Jewelry and Watches that can get you 25% off. So if you're interested, I'll put that in the description. So around $700, I do think it's a good buy, uh, especially for that movement, for the level of finishing, the quality of the dial. I think uh, Hamilton brings a good solid product to the market and is, is very comparable to the, to the Oris's that you're looking at. The big kicker for me is size. The Hamilton Murph, it's a big watch. It's big. It, it might not sound that big being 42 millimeters, but it wears big. It has a dominant stance on wrist, very dial heavy look when it comes to the aesthetics. And I know guys that have bought it with seven inch wrists saying, you know what, a 14 year old girl wore this watch in Interstellar, I can definitely pull it off. But after a number of months, even loving it at first, you know, within that first couple weeks, it gets old, it gets a little bit cumbersome. So I would tell you, buy the Murph. If you can pull off the size, if you have the wrists for it, or you have the sport watch preferences when it comes to larger wearing watches, then I think you would enjoy it. I think it would be a slightly superior watch when you look at the overall package compared to the Oris, but uh, it's a very, you know, it's a very negligible amount in my opinion. Most of it is the movement. Uh, if you don't have the wrists for it, I would say easily buy the Big Crown Pointer Date from Oris. I hope I'm not coming across as too harsh on them, bagging on them for using inaccurate Salita movements with red rotors. I'm not trying to be harsh because I respect Oris. They're moving in a great direction and I've owned several in the past and I do plan on purchasing more in the future. So the nice thing with them is great color options. I've reviewed the limited green. I've tried on the beautiful red version. I've reviewed the all bronze with the bronze dial. And I think it's, it's a great fit. It's proportional on wrist. Uh, the OEM strap options are far superior to the uh, kind of plasticky leather that comes on the, on the Murph, the Hamilton. So I think, again, I'm not trying to harsh on Oris because they bring a good product to market generally, but I prefer the Hamilton. I would buy the Hamilton if I had the wrists, and if I didn't, I would buy the Oris and I would not look back and I would enjoy the purchase. So uh, hopefully, Eric, that helped out a little bit and I'm not regurgitating the same old talking points that you hear on YouTube and on watch blogger sites and, and forums and such. So thanks for your email. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the kind compliment. And guys, sound off with your suggestions and experience in the comment section. Thanks for everything. Thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.